Hi, I'm James, and today on the desk we have this, which is the HP Elite X360 1040 Gen 9. This is very uh, closely related to the Gen 9, uh, the Gen 10 version, I should say, which uses the 13th Gen chips, uh, so the Intel Core 13th Gen. This uses 12th Gen, but they are fundamentally pretty much the same machine. Being a business-focused laptop, uh, this is a pretty easy one to get into and work on, um, but memory is not upgradable on this system, only the SSD. So we're using a Philips size O uh, screwdriver bit here, and to get started all we have is five screws which are exposed on the back. There are no hidden screws, unlike on many HP laptops, underneath these rubber strips. The business ones keep everything exposed here. So, with those five screws removed, what we're then going to do is take our pry tool, which should be the only other tool we really need here, and we're just going to press into this groove at the back, and lift just to get the pry tool inside. And as you do that, you should hear just the clips releasing. So we're going to go all the way along the back, including both corners, and then with that done, we're going to get fingernails just in here, gently ease the back, push the pry tool in on the sides, and then we can kind of hinge it up at the front and remove the back panel. So once inside, our first job is to disconnect the battery, just to make sure we don't inadvertently have the system switched on. If we're looking to replace it, it's a WP03XL type battery. And what we're going to do is just take each side of the battery connector there, and you have these little sticky out pieces uh, on the edge of the connector, and we're just going to ease it out. Disconnecting that makes sure the machine is electrically off. If you do need to replace the battery itself, you have four screws holding the battery in place. I will include a link to a uh, replacement battery on Amazon as well in the description below, along with links to the tools that we're using here as well. So with the four screws removed, we have a small tab here. We're going to pull this up and then just slide the battery out. And then to replace, it's a simple case of line it back up in its original position with these tabs uh, lined up with these little slots here. Place it back down and screw it back in place. We're obviously not going to reconnect it at this time. We'll save that until the end when we finish looking at the other um, replaceable and serviceable parts. For items such as the Thunderbolt ports, um, these are on a separate board over here. Thunderbolt ports are integrated onto the main board and so aren't easily replaceable. If, if these are damaged, it would be a solder-based repair, which is going to be fairly specialist. Um, there is a small I.O. board over here for the USB port and audio connectors, however, so if that needs to be replaced, that is possible. Our memory is soldered to the main board up here, so we're not going to be able to replace that. Again, that's really going to be a main board replacement if you need to upgrade there. However, what we do have is our SSD under this uh, EMC cover here, and by peeling back this bit of tape, we can then undo the retention screw and remove that like so. And then, using this pull tab, requiring a little bit of force. I'm just gonna get the uh, plastic pry tool in here just to help. So the metal clips hold that uh, EMC cover onto the board, and we can remove that like so. We can then lift our SSD up and gently pull it out of the socket. In terms of a replacement drive, um, because you have these components underneath the sl uh, slot and also this pad here, you're going to want ones which are single-sided. So when this Sabrent drive we have here 
it has additional components on the back side and because you have this pad here uh, and other bits it doesn't lie flush um, so make sure that your replacement has a bare uh, you know, componentless back to it and what we're going to do is insert the drive press in we can screw it back down in place uh, before replacing the, EMMs, uh, the EMC cover and then taking the cover we want to line up with the metal slot uh, little clips on the board and press it back down it's a little bit tricky here just to make sure they are all aligned With all those in we should be able to clip that back in place like so. Uh, to make sure the SSD is also contacting so over the controller here make sure you transfer this pad if it's onto a new drive. The Wi-Fi card in this system is an Intel AX211 and there is a possibility that they um, implement a block list in the BIOS on this so that you can only use certified Wi-Fi cards. If you have tried another and it's worked let me know in the comments but to replace the Wi-Fi card. First of all we're just going to release the two antennas. We can then use our screwdriver to undo the single mounting screw and then like the SSD we can just slide that out. And then to replace we can reinsert, press down and screw into place. The antennas are labelled, so number two is for the aux, uh, for the main, I should say, as it is on the Wi-Fi card itself. And what we want to, want to do is the awkward thing of just aligning the connector and clipping it down into place. Then on the other side, So the same thing here, align and clip down. To replace the thermal paste and clean out the fan, so first of all what we're going to do is Again, just get the edges of the fan connector here. This is quite awkward to actually film well. So just ease that out to disconnect the fan. We then are going to remove the three screws for our fan. The fan can actually be slipped out with the heatsink in place. So if you just want to clean that front edge or clean the fan, that can be done uh, just by removing the fan like so. If you want to repaste the uh, CPU, however, we have an additional four screws. These should be done up and undone diagonally like so to ensure even pressure. So undoing these, we also want to just remove this tape between the heatsink and the memory cover. And then with that done, we should hopefully be able to lift up the cooler. piece of tape here which I've missed
And from here, we have our heatsink removed and are able to clean up the heatsink and processor to reply to the paste. So to clean these, I'm just using a little IPA on each. And I'm just going to clean off the original thermal paste. These being good examples of the machine don't actually really need repasting, but since we're taking this off, it's good to uh, put some fresh on. But as the machines get older, then this does need doing at some point just to keep things in good order thermally. So we have our CPU die cleaned up like so, and then Looking at the heatsink, we can do the same here, just to wipe off the original paste. For the replacement, I'm using some uh, GLID GC4. And what we want to do is just make sure we have a little bit of paste applied to each die. Then we are going to bring in our heatsink, ensuring these little bits of tape are going to be sat atop it, not below it. Press down to ensure that spreads a bit. And then screwing down the heatsink again diagonally. Sure, these are all sufficiently tight. And then pushing that tape back down to connect it up to the uh, EMC covers. We now can replace the fan, slotting it into position, doing up the three screws, making sure it's properly lined so they actually go in. And last of all, obviously not forgetting to slot back in our fan connector. And then refit the base. So to do this, we're going to align the front and slot it into place before pushing down the back panel. And screwing in the five screws. So I hope you found this video useful. If you found uh, it's helped you upgrade or repair your machine, do let me know in the comments. Um, give the video a like and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos as we post them. Thanks for watching.